Understanding Java Servlets. Introduction. The goal of this book is to explain how you can use J2E to create these dynamic web components. We'll do this by discussing servlets and Java server pages JSPs in great technical depth. We'll present the theory behind these concepts, and then supplement the theory with practical code. Then, by using Tomcat or a similar web server, you can construct your own code to cement the material in your mind. 1. 1. What is a servlet? As is apparent from its name, a servlet is a server-side entity. But what exactly does it mean? Is it a new design pattern for writing servers? Is it a new Java class? Or is it a new technology? The answer to all these questions is yes, albeit in different contexts. To understand any new concept, it is important to know the reasons behind its conception. So, let's start by having a look at the tasks a server needs to do. 1. 1. 1 Server Responsibilities Every server that provides services to remote clients has two main responsibilities. The first is to handle client requests. The second is to create a response to be sent back. The first task involves programming at the socket level, extracting information from request messages, and implementing client-server protocols, such as FTP and HTTP. The second task, creating the response, varies from service to service. For example, in the case of FTP servers that serve file transfer requests, response creation is as simple as locating a file on the local machine. On the other hand, HTTP servers that host full-fledged web applications are required to be more sophisticated in the way they generate output. They have to create the response dynamically, which may involve complicated tasks, such as retrieving data from the database, applying business rules, and presenting the output in the formats desired by different clients. One way to write a simple server that serves only static data would be to code everything in a single executable program. This single program would take care of all the different chores, such as managing the network, implementing protocols, locating data, and replying. However, for HTTP servers that serve syndicated data, we require a highly flexible and extensible design. Application logic keeps changing, clients need personalized views of information, and business partners need customized processing rules. We cannot write a single program that handles all these tasks. Furthermore, what if a new functionality has to be added? What if the data format changes? Modifying the source files especially after the developer has left. To add new code is surely the last thing we want to do. Well, there is a better design for these kinds of servers. Divide the code into two executable parts, one that handles the network and one that provides the application logic and let the two executables have a standard interface between them. This kind of separation makes it possible to modify the code in the application logic without affecting the network module, as long as we follow the rules of the interface. Traditionally, people have implemented this design for HTTP servers using Common Gateway Interface CGI, on one side of this interface is the main web server, and on the other side are the CGI scripts. The web server acts as the network communications module and manages the clients, while the CGI scripts act as data processing modules and deliver the output. They follow the rules of the common gateway interface to pass data between them. 1. 1. 2 Server Extensions Although CGI provides a modular design, it has several shortcomings. The main issue for high-traffic websites is scalability. Each new request invocation involves the creation and destruction of new processes to run the CGI scripts. This is highly inefficient, especially if the scripts perform initialization routines, such as connecting to a database. Moreover, they use file input. Output I, O as a means of communication with the server, causing a significant increase in the overall response time. A better way is to have the server support separate executable modules that can be loaded into its memory and initialized only once when the server starts up. Each request can then be served by the already in memory and ready to serve copy of the modules. 
Fortunately, most of the industrial strength servers have been supporting such modules for a long time, and they have made the out-of-memory CGI scripts obsolete. These separate executable modules are known as server extensions. On platforms other than Java, server extensions are written using native language APIs provided by the server vendors. For example, Netscape Server provides the Netscape Server Application Programming Interface and SAPI, and Microsoft's Internet Information Server IIS provides the Internet Server Application Programming Interface ISAPI. In Java, server extensions are written using the Servlet API. One and the server extension modules are called Servlets. One. Two. What is a Servlet container? A web server uses a separate module to load and run servlets. This specialized module, which is dedicated to servlet management, is called a servlet container, or servlet engine. 1. 2. 1. The big picture. Figure 1. 1 shows how different components fit into the big picture. Figure 1. 1. The big picture. All the components of a web-based application HTML files are stored in the file system, servlets run within a servlet container, and business data is in the database. The browser sends requests to the web server. If the target is an HTML file, the server handles it directly. If the target is a servlet, the server delegates the request to the servlet container, which in turn forwards it to the servlet. The servlet uses the file system and database to generate dynamic output.